that's one of the uh, long term or long haul effects of um, undiagnosed Lyme disease. And um, it's what eventually led to my best fr great friend, um, Neil uh, Spector, who got me into this, um, having a heart transplant. And um, for whatever reason, the organism likes to hang out in um, certain areas of the body. Um, you know, we, we all know about the joints and the um, other parts of, you know, give these arthritic type symptoms. And that's thought to be low oxygenated regions um, of, of, of the body. So the heart part is uh, um, thought to be around in the sort of connective parts or the muscle parts of the of, of the heart. And uh, for what re whatever reason, it's, you know, that's one of its places it seems to settle in and cause this heart block. You know, um, I have to say that I'm a, not a microbiologist in, in it by any means. And, you know, Lyme is a new thing for us. We're really a, a chemistry shop, if you like. We make things, we make drugs. And that's sort of what I've learned about that day, about undiagnosed or um, persistent infection is one of the you know, symptoms is this heart block phenomenon that um, you know causes cardiovascular issues. So it's something to do with the way the organism migrates its way through the body. And certainly in the um, mouse models of infection that, that, that um, we've had a look at with some of the experts that make that, that is one of the places that, you know, when you infect these animals, you look uh, for accumulation of the organism. So I don't think it's really fully understood why they end up in that particular organ um, or favorite. Um, I can understand why they end up in the joints. Um, that's low oxygenation environment, and they like they like that. Um, I wouldn't describe, you know, this left ventricular region where they where you get the block. There's low oxygen now. <laughs> That's sort of a, a, a paradigm, I guess, a little paradox, perhaps. But, you know, one of the reasons that um, people sort of try to understand that. And one of the, you know, things about our program is this imaging element where we can really look at that. We hope in, the, in a human being by pet imaging, ultimately. So so it's a good question. Why, why do they go there? <laughs> yeah, we don't know. Yeah, I think, you know, the burning underlying uh, issue in this whole area is, um, you know, showing this definitively showing, you know, there's an underlying infection in cases where they have been misdiagnosed or drug treatment was was given, but the symptoms were unresolved, right? So one of the big contentious issues with many uh, infectious disease doctors that even exists, right? So the work that we did there is really on the road to trying to develop uh, Im imaging agents where we could see infection. And we were really, that paper is really, was really about developing tools to first enable you know uh, to, to look at how to get certain types of molecules into the organism first so that's that's you know it's all about the cell work in that in that particular study and in, in that study we we had developed um, a drug-like molecule that recognized a Borrelia protein specifically um, it didn't do anything when you gave it to the organism, you know, which is, you know, well, why did you do that? Uh, but we were sort of building off another story we developed in cancer where we did the same thing. And we added another drug to it, if you like. It had a tether on it and it took this other drug. And we were able to show in that paper that you could target this um, organism with this tethered thing and then kill it, you know, in a, in a tube. Um, but the, what we really wanted, you know, so, mecha, so mechanistically we could show, you know, because that's what we like to do, right? We like to try and understand how to get things in places, you know, as a drug strategy. Our next step is to try and turn that into an imaging agent, a, a PET imaging agent. So that paper really sets the stage 
for that process, which is exactly what we're doing right now. We know we can target this protein. It's called HTPG. It's got a great name. <laughs> and um, we know that we can get things um, into the Borrelia across its impenetrable cell wall, like our body. And then in that case, we added a toxin that when we activated it, we'd like we could kill it in a spectacular way. So now we know that we can do that. We can, we're trying to see if we can get other things to go in there. And one of the things we're trying to get in there are things that can be seen by PET-CT, which is the major method, that, you know, it's positron emission topography, which is used medically all the time um, to diagnose uh, cancers and, and metastases. Um, which is where, which are, which is our original background. So that's that's what that story is about. It, it it showed that you could get this this drug in, and then you could cause it to be have a negative impact on the organism. Um, it, we know this drug doesn't go into normal human cells, and so there's a drug strategy. And now we want to turn that into a PET imaging agent to get at a fundamental question in the entire field, which is, do people that have unresolved Lyme disease have an active infection that's still present in their body? Um, and could we see that? And if we could do that, that would go a huge, you know, that would add a huge amount of credibility to the whole field in terms of this underlying infection, you know, idea that is so hotly contested by many infectious disease docs who simply don't believe that's what's happening you know that's a you know and we see this as one way to do it and um uh, because that's what we do with with tumors and that's what we've shown you know with tumor biology and things in human beings so we want to try to do that with an infectious disease like borrelia well i think that the key takeaways are that we are pretty close to doing this um, we have developed a number of, of new molecules that, that we can, um, we're, we're working into introduce into an animal model of infection to demonstrate proof of concept in a standard Borrelia model of infection. It's a mouse model. It's the, the normal, um, and show that, that, that puts us on a path to a clinical trial, um, for these pet agents. And the nice thing about these agents, these pet agents, is that they can, they're, they're um, great investigative tools where you're not going to hurt anyone by giving them. They're, they're, they're um, designed to be microdosed so that you can non invasively or any, you know, we just give these to um, patients that have an underlying infection and basically image them, their whole body, um, to see for the, uh, you know, evidence for. Um, underlying Lyme infection or, or Borrelia infection that's in any of their organs all over the body. And I think we could move fairly quickly to that, in, you know, being able to do that um, with these types of molecules. We, we've done it for, for looking for metastases in humans, for example. We published some work on that uh, last year, um, you know, through a similar route. So, and moreover, there's, um, a clinical trial going on um, up funded by the Cohen Foundation uh, in uh, I think it's up in Columbia and at, at um, John Hopkins where they're taking newly infected patients um, in a study there which we could probably plug into with these compounds to you know establish that we can a even detect any Lyme infection in a in a, in a patient where it's already been established. And then go on from there to, to start to think about how you would um, enroll people that had you know chronic infections. That that would be the path. So I don't think with you know we're we're on that clinical path is where where we are right now, and we're hoping within this year that we will be in a position where we can declare something called an IND, which is a a, a preclinical you know um, a candidate. Uh, uh, to move into people, which is really where you want to be, you know. So a few animal studies. We have our own pet machine coming, you know. Establish that that the molecules work in a, in a living system, and then you go to the FDA and you and you and you move it down that path straight into humans. And um, and to, you know, when you when you're using imaging, the safety things and 
things. The bar, the bar is a lot lower. There's less, uh, you know, uh, chance of, of toxicities and things. You know, when, when you're just doing investigative imaging. And from there, you know, I mean, if we if we do that, if we establish in people that yes, we can detect Borrelia infections. I think that changes the field, and that now people will get be taken more seriously.